Okay, part two, we got cut off. Um, if they were doing a trade, they would bring in, let's say, two guards and say, hey, I'll trade you two of my trained warriors for two of your trained warriors. And that way they kept the peace through kingdoms and they would exchange martial knowledge, martial information, etc. And they would do the same thing with medicine, okay? So, supposedly, uh, warriors from Siam ended up in Sumatra and this mixed their tiger style or cat style mixed with the cat styles of, of uh, Minangkabau and Sumatra. So anyhow, back to the Harimau from Sorak. A lot of people don't know this, that Masjud supposedly was Sumatran. So when he came to learn from Paksarak, he already had a Sumatran base. Okay, he already had a Minang base or Minangkabau base. So obviously, he modified what he learned from Paksarak to his style, let's say Masjud style, if you will. And the Masjud style has a low base and is using both hands and things like that. Because supposedly Paksarak had an um, a arm that didn't work so well, atrophied arm and an atrophied leg or a club leg. So if you think about how Paksarak moved, he probably didn't move the way we see Harimau players moved, okay? Maybe, maybe some variations. But it was probably more upright, more Chimande type movement because supposedly he trained under Abakair, the founder of Chimande. Okay, Masjud, who came later, trained under Paksarak and he learned what he learned from Sarak and then applied it to whatever base of knowledge he had. Because what happens when somebody learns Sarak? They don't give up any martial training they've learned before. Instead, now they learn to see what they had before through the filter of Sarak, through the, the filter of the martial science behind Sarak. And what is that? That's the geometry, that's the physics, that's the body mechanics, that's the understanding of, of different principles of motion and principles of energy, okay? So, where do we see Harimau and Sarak? You see it in the Jurus, okay? It's hidden and it's codified inside the Jurus. For example, if you look at uh, the Jurus from Uncle Maurice or Uncle Paul de Tours and even Uncle Willem de Tours, it's constantly coming in and out. There's always level change. There's always movements where they're going high to medium to low, back to medium, back to high, or high to low, low to high, okay? And if you look at Menangkabau Kuda Kuda train, you have 28 Kuda Kuda, which is like an alphabet. And that alphabet is 28 possible variations of movement once you link them together, and it's constantly going high, low, high, low, medium, low, high, low, 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 medium, low, however you want to organize it, or however you improvise it, okay? So one of the trainings that's constantly done in Sumatran training, or Minangkabau training, is this idea of kuda kombinasi, where you're combining your kuda kuda so that you can move from anywhere, point A to point B to point Z, wherever you want to go on the alphabet, and move 360 degrees without any problem, without effort, or effortless, okay? Ideally, that training used to exist, um, and it still exists in the Javanese training as well. They have Juru Kombinasi, uh, Kemban Kombinasi, um, Sikap Kombinasi, okay? Bukalan Kombinasi. I mean, Kombinasi just means combination. This makes your training alive, okay? So, one thing that people have to understand, we think of style, we think of technique, we think of, oh, this guy moves like this, this guy moves like that. You have to get out of that because the real C-Lot is based on mindset and principles and concepts. And when you can understand that, then you unlock your Silat, your Harimau, whatever you want to call it, your Sirak, you know, if you're a Chimande practitioner, your Chimande. All of these have a flavor, a principle, and a way of moving, okay? So, here's my thought for you and the gift I want to give to you, the listener, is explore, explore your postures. Spend time in your postures. Investigate what you can do in the posture. We have a concept of this in Guru 
Richard Crabbe the Vort Harimau, which is you weaponize the Kuda Kuda. You weaponize it with your mind, with your handwork, okay? With your, what they call donkeys or, or the, the, uh, the hands, okay? The punches, the elbows, the palm strikes. You weaponize because in Harimau, what happens is what goes on in Harimau is in between the Kuda Kuda. As you flow from one Kuda to the other, the, 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 the exponent of Harimau is hitting you, slapping you, tearing you, ripping something, trying to break something, etc., etc. Okay, we're going to pause this and go to part three.